Hello all, this is your Nimi Rajo and today I am with you with a next, yet again another chapter from the grade 10, the first flight book and the name of the chapter is Nelson Mandela Long Walk to Freedom. Yes, we all know that the famous quote by Nelson Mandela, education is a weapon to change the world. Yes. And he has literally proved that anything can be impossible. He was such a great person. As you all know, Nelson Mandela is from South Africa and he has literally fought a lot against all the racism. As you can see, he was born in the year 1918 till 2013. And those years, among those years, except almost out of 95 years, 27 years he was in prison just imagine a person in prison for 27 years just for fighting for one cause and that cause was freedom yes everybody loves freedom and he said almost nearly three decades literally three decades the South African normally whom they call the drugs they were under the white people and they had to face a lot of discrimination just because on the basis of their color and because of this three decades they were on the basis of their color they were completely taken away from all their rights and it is one of the greatest leaders called Nelson Mandela who has brought in a lot of changes and if you can look into one term which is called as apartheid Apartheid is basically separating people on the basis of color, race, etc. And he was one person who was against it. And he put forward a term called anti-apartheid. Okay, so that's about Nelson Mandela. And what we are learning is an autobiography. I hope you know the difference between autobiography and biography. Autobiography is if I am writing about myself, my career, my profession, it's called autobiography. If I am writing about someone else, if I am writing about you, then it is a biography. I hope the term is clear. When I am writing about myself, it's autobiography. When I am writing about something else or someone else, it's a biography. I hope it's clear. Coming back to the chapter. Yes, as I told you just now regarding the anti-apartheid and things like that, when you begin this uh, the autobiography, a small portion is taken in the first light. Okay, so in this first light, first light, what they're focusing is basically on South Africa after so many of decades, after two to three decades, that due to the democratic elections, due to democratic election, he was in the party of ANC, African National Congress. He stood there for election and he won the election. And he was the first black to win the election. And he, soon after winning the election, there's an inaugural ceremony. And for that ceremony, he thinks about, he speaks a lot about the inaugural speech and the problems what the South Africans had to face. All these things have been discussed. So when you look into this point of view, here you can focus or you can see over here in this particular portion what you're going to learn about when he has just received the he became the president the first black president okay the whole thing was literally um, it was happening in uh, uh, Pretoria the capital of South Africa and the in the ceremony it was said nearly more than one lakh South African men and women were there it was such a huge program and for that program, he actually called all the international leaders because it was the first time South African gates were open to all. Till then, they were ruled by the white people. Okay, so just like story, if you learn like history, it's very easy for you. Okay, so that particular day, everything, everyone were open and the gates were open, and all the international leaders came into South Africa. Now, what I've written here is only the important points in the point of examination. After that, I told you already, it was the first democratic election where the people are actually selecting their leader. This is the very first time it happened in Africa. And then for the speech and 
he he very clearly said it was the 10th may and for the 10th may uh, 1994 he was elected as the president and 10th may 1994 what happened he said it was uh, the way it began it was a quite bright and clear sky for the past few days i had been pleasantly beside by the dignitaries and the world leaders who were coming to pay their respects before the inauguration so all that's how he is speaking about it was a wonderful autumn day and all all that is not important when he begin he is speaking like this we are here because we are going to enjoy and we are here because we have got the victory we have got the victory for what peace justice peace for human dignity he speak and he also says these people black people they suffer a lot they suffer a lot and then he also says again one important statement never again the beautiful land will experience the oppression never again the beautiful land as you all know the our south africa is such a beautiful land and it is never again my country will feel the oppression no one else is going to stamp on the south african people on the basis of color we are going to be very powerful that is what has been discussed in the first two pages we also speak about few things um, why did mandela thank the international leaders because he was happy to call everybody to his country then coming in the next page and all he also speaks a little about the boer war you have to know what is boer war basically boer war is something actually there was a war between the farmers and these boers are actually descendants of the dutch and uh, over here he is speaking that during the first decade not 20th century first decade that's actually before he was born and all during at that point of time it was said that and they uh, they had this boer war and there was a complete one of the structure was uh, constructed okay it was completely against these black people the structure was constructed and it was said that the structure they created was on the basis of the harshest and the most inhumane act this happened in the first decade of 20th century by the end of 20th century they got the freedom in the year 1994 now that is regarding the boer war and he also said his country is rich in minerals and gems all of us know that south african country is basically known for their minerals and gems the gold and everything yes you have been knowing it for because of geographical factors and history and you know a lot about south africa he says although there is minerals and gems i mandela thinks according to me i consider the greatest wealth is the people that's what a leader should be more than the wealth and everything my greatest wealth or the country country the greatest wealth is people it's not the minerals or gems very well he has said now again moving on he also speaks about uh, in between if you can look at the page number 20 of your textbook i'm just speaking about the important points he he is so thankful and at that particular day for the inaugural speech he says i'm so thankful for all the patriots who has died before me because they started to struggle the african people they started to struggle from the beginning of 20th century okay now it's the end of 20th century so he's telling at this particular day i would like to thank all the patriots who died for us and also he takes that little uh, effort to say a thank you note for them they also said um, it is not actually because of me they won the freedom it's also because of the people who died for the country years back and he also named some name he also named few of them he said it's a decade of oppression and brutality it it happened decades only then we got the freedom it's not just because of me and he also says i think about the sacrifices thousands of people who have made before me and he named some of them in page number 20 of a textbook the pictures are also given over there oliver tambo the walter sisler the chief lucius the use of dadu the bram fisher the robert and he also say those men were the extraordinary men of courage wisdom and generosity and he said never you will find people like them again and then after that coming in he says it was quite difficult to win the freedom of the country and he said 
I wish I thought I think that it's because of the courage the South African people were able to win. Thousands of people died. And the people who just I mentioned, the great patriots who died for the country, all of them had that one thing, and that's called courage. And he gives a wonderful definition. And that quote is always used by many great motivational speakers. What is courage? Courage is not the absence of fear. It's not that you don't have fear, but it's the triumph over it. It is a victory over it. So it's not the absence of fear. It's not because that I don't scare anyone. I'm not fear of anyone. But it is actually the triumph or the victory over all those things. That's a wonderful definition he gives on courage. Then uh, moving on after that, he also says, uh, he also speaks about few things over there. He says, according to me in life, it's not just me, every human being has got twin obligation. And he said, first obligation is to his family, to his family, to his parents, to his wife, children. That's the first obligation. Then he says, then comes the second. The second obligation towards his people means the citizens, other citizens, community where he is living and then the most important his country. What are you doing for your country? Instead of just uh, what whatever happened there, whatever happened, you're just speaking out. But what did you do to the country? Do you at least give one motivational word to the people over there? What are you doing for the country? It's actually something for us to think. It's not the obligations for a leader. But it's obligation for every man. The person who's oppressing you is actually taking another man's freedom, which is completely wrong. And then he said, uh, a person, a man who takes away another man's freedom is a prisoner of hatred. He's locked behind the bars of prejudice and narrow-mindedness. So he himself is barred and he's actually taking away others' freedom. So you speak about these two terms of oppressor and oppressed. These are the important points of the chapter. Now we'll move on to the important questions of the chapter. The first question, what are twin obligations every man has in life? I already discussed with you the twin obligations regarding family, um, family and the second one will be regarding people, community and the country, which you have to expand and write. When and how did Mandela's hunger for his own freedom become the greater hunger for the freedom of his people? I didn't mention that point as a very very important point if you have your textbook in page number 22 very clearly he speaks about it because initially when he was born he, he was let free to run wherever he wants he would go near his mother's heart uh, he is free to swim in the clear stream all these things he was he had that particular freedom and then as long as they were my father everything he uh, what followed all the tribal rules everything he did but and he uh, uh, no one as he followed all these rules what happened he was not troubled by god or any other laws of man but then after from this boyhood freedom what happened was he just discovered that young man that my freedom had already taken from me and he was hunger for that freedom and then later what happened obviously he joined the anc the african national congress and then he realized if my brother is in chains of freedom it affects me too and that's how he started working for it and later as a young man he literally yearned the basic and honorable freedom and he realized the freedom cannot be obstructed in a lawful life although, although as you all know he was a lawyer by profession in spite of that he thought that's not enough and he joined the african national congress and that's when this own freedom became the greater freedom of my people and he said it was this desire for the freedom of people and because of this he started to live for others Last question, what is courage? I already told you. What is courage? Courage is not actually the absence of fear, but the triumph over it, but the victory over it. So these are the important questions of the chapter. And then if they ask another question, they might ask you, what ideals does he set for the future of South Africa? The ideals is actually, he says, it's to liberate all the people from the bondage of poverty, deprivation, suffering, gender and discrimination. There can also be asked the ideals of what he thought which he would set for the future. So that's all about the chapter Nelson Mandela Long Walk to Freedom. Remember he was a symbol of peace and he was one person who was against apartheid, anti-apartheid he was and then he was a revolutionary leader. He was a president of India actually from 1994 to 1999 
It was 1994 in the month of May 10, he was selected as the president of South Africa. And then uh, a lot about African National Congress and all. So obviously I thought like how Nelson Mandela's life was dawned with bright and clear. I hope this chapter all the things are bright and clear for you. Hope you enjoyed my video. Please subscribe and like and share with your friends. Nimi Rizu signing off. Bye. Thank you.